Miami didn't have their best game last week against Vatek on a Friday night. How do they respond? We'll unpack that right now. First things first, make sure you are subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel. Miami Hurricane Faithful, we have had a lot of y'all join the party recently, and we appreciate you so much for that. If you have not yet subscribed, no time like the present. The Hard Count is brought to you by our friends over at Price Picks. Price Picks Daily Fantasy, easy to use, easy to withdraw what you win. We have a play for you in this segment, so stay tuned. All you got to do, pick two or more player projections from the board. We play college football and only college football on this show. Crucial part here, when you use code Hard Count now, $5 in lineups gets you $50 in promo funds just for playing. Now, we plan to win. We play to win. You play to win the game. You play to win the prize picks play. However, if we don't, you use that code, $5 in lineups, you still get $50 in promo funds, win or lose. All right? So, as I was saying, Miami didn't play their best football. They know that. Mario Cristobal knows that. Everybody knows that. And that's good news. I don't think anybody is believing that they somehow, some way, like, played a football game that was uh, deserving of having a better score than what they got, if that makes sense. Now, last week, you can talk about the spot. And we talked about the spot all week last week. Quite frankly, we said, hey, listen, I think Miami wins 18 and a half, though. I don't love it. Why? Miami hadn't played a Power 4 team since they opened the year in the swamp and beat the breaks off Florida. Okay, so you have a couple of weeks there. Not going through the motions, but you're not having a ton of resistance. It's tough to turn on the switch and say, okay, now we're back to playing at a high level. We're ready for the improved level of competition. That's one part of it. The other part of it, Friday night game. We said it all week. Hey, weird things happen on a Friday night. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. But for whatever reason, when you play on a Friday night football game, logic has to be dialed back a, a good bit. Like if Miami plays Vatek on a Saturday afternoon at 3.30 Eastern, maybe they blow them out. I don't know. Maybe they do cover that spread. But Friday night, different rules when it comes to Friday night. So you pass that test on the, uh, you know, by the fingernails of a overturned Hail Mary, but you passed it, all right? So you don't apologize for that. However, if that spot was tough, this spot is maybe not just as tough, but presents a pretty similar uh, difficulty level. Because you got to go from one coast to the United States, greatest country in the world, to the other coast of the United States, go to Cal. And is it like a normal, you know, call it a noon kick? No, uh, it is a 1030 Eastern kick. So get out the caffeine. We do caffeine pills or we'll do some Huel energy drinks, whatever you got to do to make sure you're dialed into the nth degree because this, uh, this is going to be a tough one, a tough spot. Again, 1030 local time if you're from Miami. So, again, difficult spot. Also, add on to it, great opportunity for a uh, letdown spot after an emotional win over Virginia Tech. Took you to the, to the last seconds. Like, I can drain you a little bit. So, here's my thing. For Miami, how do you respond? Because your response to a spot like that, I think, will tell us a lot. And we said it during the live show. Another reason to be subscribed. It's because we do a live show here three times a week, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. The response to playing poorly and still winning I think you have two options from that, depending on how your team, you know, is able to uh, to view themselves. You can say, okay, good. We won the game. <sighs> Exhale, relief, awesome. You know what? We still actually are as good as we thought we were because we found a way to win and it wasn't our best day. Or you can say, hey, we played poorly. The second scenario is we, we didn't play as well as we wanted to. That's not okay with us. We have to ramp it up a little bit. We have to respond to that game like we lost because quite frankly, if that – review doesn't get overturned you would have lost and Miami knows that and listening to the way they talked about that game afterwards was really encouraging to me if I'm on my main if I'm a Miami fan you got Cam Ward being asked hey how long will you be happy about this win speaking to the Vatek game right after the game he says I'm not happy about this win like I don't feel good about this game I turned it over three times <laughs> like essentially Cam Ward saying listen I'm like that was well below our standard which to me is encouraging because if I'm a Miami fan, it says, okay, the internal standard is what we're operating by. Now, everyone has bad games. It's how you respond to those bad games that ultimately, I believe, defines you and defines your culture. Because Miami now, the spread is at 10.5, favoring them over Cal on the road. It opened at 12.5. Miami should blow the doors off Cal, just if we're going to be real here. And that's not disrespecting Cal. That's just the nature of the beast here. 
them actually being able to do that, I think, is very much so dictated on the temperature set internally during the week leading into this game. And to be honest now, who sets the temperature? Yes, your coaching staff, but even more importantly, the leaders in your locker room. Who is the leader of this football team? Cam Ward. He's your alpha dog. So in this game now, I'm expecting him to draw a line in the sand and say, listen, last week was last week. We got something to prove. We're playing to our standard. Like, let's roll. And also, quick, quick side note here, credit the OC Shannon Dawson out there for letting Cam Ward play, man. Like, whenever Cam Ward had those turnovers, he comes off on the sideline. And honestly, some of those turnovers you could be upset about if you're Shannon Dawson. The fumble is frustrating. Feels like, you know, that was a situation that could have been avoided if you're just maybe being a little bit more conscientious with the football. Uh, the, the second interception was one that makes you a little bit frustrated. Like, however, Shannon Dawson, very much so a calm demeanor, Talking to Cam Ward, hey, what'd you see is based on what I was looking at, the outside looking, and that was kind of the vibe I got. He's just letting them play. Miami right now is leaning on their best player. 55% throwing the football right now is how they're dicing it up. 11.1 yards a pass. They're not pulling the reins back at all. They're letting Cam Ward be Cam Ward and empowering them to do so. So again, going back to this game, I think Cam Ward draws a line in the sand. I think he goes off all week long. He's heard about how good that Cal secondary is how opportunistic they are. The prize picks number for him when it comes to his pass yards, 298 and a half. I'll take the more there. So we like him to have more than that number. I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes into the 300s in that situation. Jaden Ott is the running back for Cal. I'll take him to have less than 70 and a half rush yards. So I'll pair those two together. Feel good about doing so. Again, code hard count. $5 in lineups. You play that lineup, put $5 down, you get $50 in promo funds just for playing. We'll pat ourselves on the back here a little bit. We've been hot. So feel free, feel free to uh, fade or follow, but we've been hot. So with that being said, we've already said we think Miami wins this football game. We have a prediction out on that, so go check that out. But I think Cam Ward and the response from him will be what this football team embodies. I like the Canes to roll. Make sure you subscribe. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time.